Hello and welcome back. So we've looked at lighting and composition and we've also looked at material application in G5 Tender. If you've not seen those videos, I suggest you check it out in the description or in the links attached. So the next step here will be for us to work on our rendering. Rendering in G5 is very easy. So before we go into rendering, I want to see if I can place realistic gravel um, models in the foreground of this image to make it more realistic. So I went to 3ds Max, got this gravel model, I exported it to D5. I've just imported it into D5. Before I start working, this is a tip I want to share with you. If your system is not that powerful, you can um, under display set it the real time quality to smooth. This will um, reduce the strain of showing everything in real time on your system. So I'm going to click on the model and bring it in. You can see we have a size problem already by default. Um, I'm just going to adjust this to let's say 600 and let's see how small it becomes. So this looks very okay. Now the, the challenge will be to scatter it all around uh, the view. There is no option to brush or scatter in D5 using uh, locally imported materials. Maybe as we go on in the future, that will be added. But for now, in D5 2.5, none. So I might just have to copy it around and spread it. So I'll go to the top view and um, I'll do the same thing on that display. Put it to sm um, precise instead of smooth so that it's not um, very clear. And then um, I can even on this view um, put it to wireframe. So basically what I want to do is to copy this around. So I've been able to sort of um, replicate realistic gravel instead of using um, materials. Uh, this is really important because, like I've said, working on your foreground to be as realistic as possible is, is key to having a very good um, realistic render. So I've created everything in this layer, and if I turn it off, you notice everything goes up. Why is this important? It's important because you don't want to have it on all the time so that you don't have it on all the time so that you don't get caught up with a very heavy file. So if I want it on, I'll just come here, turn it back on. So to begin rendering, I'll toggle on the camera button here by clicking on it once and it will take me to the render mode. The render mode comes out with um, what kind of rendering I want to have. If it's an, just an image or a panorama, it shows me my um, field of view, the degrees, it shows me the focal length, I need to adjust anything. And then it also allows me to set the aspect ratio. The next thing here is um, options for channels. And this is very important if you are going to work on your file after in Photoshop. It's under effect, like I said, is where you can adjust one or two things. One is that we've set the exposure while we're still setting the sunlight. And so we are free to play around with that. Um, this is the contrast is at zero. You can you can just uh, take your time to see okay what and what you might want to do. Here. It's almost like um, post production inside D5, and you will see the result in real time. This just goes to show you that you don't need to um, work in Photoshop if you don't want to. So I'm good to go, and um, there are two ways to render. You can have batch rendering by sending it to render queue. So if I click on let's say the first thing and then um, I click add to render queue. It goes to the render queue. You see a blue dot coming up here. If I click on the second scene and also say um, add to render queue, it also goes to the blue dot here. So if I click the render queue, you see that I've added two images. And then um, if I just select this all, uh, set the location where I want the rendering to, to, to go to, and then um, I can ask D5 to close after rendering because D5 always set saves before rendering. So um, I can actually ask D5 to close after rendering. So I'm going to set this to this new folder and um, I'm going to render this to image and click on render. So, like I said, it saves the project and then it proceeds to uh, render the two images.
um, this is where D5 uh, is very good compared to a lot of other softwares. But depending on how you've composited your scene, your rendering can take from between uh, a, couple, a few seconds to you know, uh, a minute or two. So it calculates the time for the rendering. Uh, for me, this is anywhere between 1 minute 35 seconds uh, from image to render, which is very, very fast. And uh, this is the real-time advantage of D5. So I'm going to render these two images. And uh, don't forget the render with all their channels. So that's also something very amazing. So, so we are done with the rendering, but before I show you the render, this is the render that motivated this whole tutorial series. I might find uh, something more difficult. You can check out the tutorial on this YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. And um, this is what we have been able to create from that uh, using a um, T5 render. So I want to thank you all for your time. This app is our final result. Uh, these are all the channels that came with it. Uh, this is the other image render. And, um, the good thing about uh, D5 is that um, it renders very quickly, good high quality results, like you can see. You can see the covers I try to make as real as possible. And then um, we can see the materials, lighting, and everything. So you can take time to recreate this yourself. In the next video, we'll be looking at animation uh, in D5 render to round up the course. We can also look at um, post-production of Photoshop, but since we've had uh, a very good image like this, uh, that is not uh, a necessity, so it's left for you. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the